So we're down in the fish hole today. It's like midday now. We've actually been working on other stuff today, but Dad built up a form for our sumps here. And while he was doing that, I was down here preparing the sumps to receive foam. Yeah, so it's a big day here, and we're quite excited about it. Um, yeah, so down here, we put these in a little while back, tapped them in fully. Uh, put those wing pieces in, tap them in, so everything's kind of just ready to receive now. Uh, today I came through and vacuumed out these sumps and wiped them down with acetone. So yeah, like Matt said, we're ready to put in the foam. Um, so we're only filling it up to right here, to the top of these basically. And we're gonna fill it part way and then we have a fiberglass sump that's going in here and a sump basically allows all the water that melts off to go into that sump and collect and then you can pump it out it keeps it from pooling up on the on the bottom of the hole in your fish hold and washing out your ice and sloshing around uh, it also makes cleanup easy when you're washing down everything gives all the soapy water and the gurry a place to go then it can get pumped out um, this area where i'm kneeling of course is a shaft alley this will be covered right here so this will be won't be seen either it will basically be like behind us here we'll have covers on it so the sump will come down here and over and then back up this part will be open where it can hold liquid and then of course we'll tie in this fiberglass and everything so we're going to start foaming this and we're just going to use pour foam it's a two pound density it's the uh, closed cell foam, two part A and B, you mix together, it reacts and expands, and it's fun stuff to use. Yeah. <laughs> so our other option was to hire somebody to come in and spray this, but because of kind of our, our timeline, um, several factors that we didn't do it, it's kind of one of those jobs where he'd have to come back several times and that's problematic. The biggest one is just getting to the dock where he can bring in his mobile unit. We'd have to move the boat over to a dock that he can access so he can get his gear down there and spray it. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, I have no idea what cost would be. I'm sure it's going to be, would be more expensive than what we spent on the, the poor foam. So um, the pour foam comes in uh, two parts, A and B. We have a 10 gallon kit, so five gallons A, five gallons B. And when mixed and applied under more or less optimal conditions, it will generate about 40 cubic foot of foam. So we measured this out roughly on kind of the high end, we're at about 35 cubic foot, so we should be good. Um, the biggest thing is just to get your area in the 70 degree range. 75 is optimal, so like with this hole, obviously it's going to be colder because it's in the water. But uh, once you get a thin layer down, you just pour a thin layer down here and it expands, and then everything after that will get good expansion. Um, heating up your, your liquid helps, so we've actually got it in a little bit of a a foam box right now with the with the heater in there the heater hose in there just warming it up into the mid 70s and then we should get good expansion out of it so that being said matt's got this all cleaned up and we are ready to go yeah so we're we have the a and b up top i'm going to measure them out and over here we have a two and a half quart cup and a drill stirring apparatus um should mix up pretty quick. In the past, we just used uh, pretty much a red party cup and popsicle sticks, poured them into a one quart uh, mixing cup mm -hmm. and just stirred up and passed down, so. Yeah, this should go quick. You don't have very long. Um, in about 20 seconds, it is foaming. And then after like, what, like a minute? It's like kind of. It pretty much doesn't pour hard. anymore yeah. and yeah, it gets, it's expanding still, but you can't do anything with it. You can't, you can't pour it anymore. It's just, it's mm -hmm. stuck. 
You can't really spread it because it'll kind of like disturb the the structure of it. Yeah. Flatten the bubbles out a little bit, I think. Yeah, I think it just makes it go flat. Yeah. Um, a bunch of it ends up on whatever you're trying to spread it with. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes wasted material. So really, the trick is to to try and get it evenly. So we'll just be pouring it like up here and that'll allow it to, we'll just try and pour it here and it'll run down in here and then it'll expand up. So, and, and that'll work good. So yeah. we've used it in the past. We used it to insulate the fish hold on our little boat, the fish tail, and it, it worked out good. Um, so we do have some experience in here. <laughs> we'll see if we remember what we did. Yep. <laughs> and uh, anyways, it's just it's just foam. It's just foam. Yep. So it'll be fine. I guess we'll hop up and uh, bust out those jugs. Yeah, we haven't used a stir stick before, a stir like this before, so this will be new. I got a, a little container acetone over here to dip it in and hopefully clean this thing off in between applications. So over here we've got just a little foam box made out of our laminated foam chunks. <laughs> Pretty handy having those kicking around still. And uh, we just stuck our heater hose in here. Yep. Through the back there and, and these feel oh they're warm to the touch. So they're good. They're not really cool anymore, so Yeah, nice. <sighs> so we've had that on in there for Couple few hours, I I reckon at this point. So. Yeah. Um, we have these labeled because we'll just be able to reuse these when we're done at the end of the day. We'll put a lid on these and we'll be able to reuse them. Um, we're gonna make sure that we mark our caps here too, so you don't want to mix this stuff up and come back to a bunch of ruined products. So. It's best to mark this stuff, and this is part B. We'll just weigh out the first batch, and then we'll know how many. Put a pounds. mark on it. Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't know if we really need to tear it, but I guess we just have an extra one here to tear it if it dies on us, right? Yep. We'll have to do that because All right. there'll be res. So what are you shooting for here then? Uh, Probably just like a pint-ish, huh? A pint. So about 40 pours. Okay. So we better keep track of it so we have a rough idea. Mm -hmm. Should be used at a temperature of about 77F for most uniform results. Oh, now it says pour equal quantities of foam B into shark thing foam A. Stir vigorously about 30 seconds. When mixture begins to turn cloudy, it should be poured immediately. When pouring into deep or confined cavities, small batches should be prepared and poured. Repeat after each pour has hardened until a cavity is filled. So one very interesting thing about this stuff, if you ever use it, do not be alarmed after you're done pouring and you go to push on it and it just disintegrates into nothing like, a, like you pushed on a Rice Krispie. Because that's about what it's like at first. The very first time that we used this, the stuff left over in the cup, I squeezed it to see, you know, how rigid it is. And yeah, poof, it's gone. It's just powder. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. And so I'm poking the stuff that we poured. Same thing. Um, very, very disconcerting. I called the company up. They thought, well, maybe you're a little heavy on one side or the other. Turns out that wasn't the problem. It just needs to cure come back the next day the stuff in the cup is you know it's hard it's like mm -hmm. trying to push a piece of really really dense foam it's not crushing it's not going anywhere so bear that in mind and don't freak out because yeah it does freak you out <laughs> huh Matt yep this stuff's supposed, <laughs> supposed to be our floor yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like walking on Rice Krispies <laughs> there's nothing there yeah, so that's a, just kind of an interesting side note if, if you ever use this stuff. Let's do it. Yeah, let's bust them open, huh? <laughs> Never be too careful. Some expensive stuff to ruin. Yeah, so this is uh, 
neighborhood of 500. I, I don't remember if it was 595 or just right at 500. So mm -hmm. for the kit, for the kit. So it is expensive, and then shipping on top of that too. So it's not exactly cheap. Just for anyone who's curious, it's a lot cheaper getting it this way than it is by the one gallon kit or the quart kit. And we knew that we needed a lot, so this is what we got. So a pint, eh? Yeah, I think we'll go for a pint. It comes in pints. Comes in pints. Perfect. Oh my god, that looks like a lot, Matt. Is that going to be too much at once? Oh boy. That's so not syrup. My gloves are really slippery. I feel like I'm in a bundle. So if I recall correctly, the, the two parts are of different color time too, I think. It's like motor oil. How do we do? Pretty good. Alrighty. Set them on the scale. Five hundred and thirty grams. Five hundred and seventy-two grams. Oh, that's weird. So part A is heavier. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so if that does about one cubic foot. I think this is 40 inches. So it should do something like in here. First layer. Okay. Masking up. All right, folks, let's just do this. We're going to put a full pour. 30 seconds. So tell me when the timer hits the, t the time. Okay. Okay. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Dump it. Ten seconds. Okay, here it goes. Oh, nice pour. Thank you. Think I should come that way with it? Over here? Sure. Well, it's already foaming. There it goes. And that's how quickly it does it. It doesn't look like much yet, but even this thin layer in here, that'll be like out of half inch or an inch here in a minute. I don't know. This would like get sticky so fast, but oh yeah, how about a acetone? Yeah, how much is foaming up already? Oh man, that feels good getting that in. 
Yeah. So I just some. Um, well, this this tone, cleaned so. off pretty good, but put it in reverse. There we go. So. There we go. Oh yeah, excuse me. Need a little more liquid in that, huh? Yeah, maybe a touch, but. It actually helped because it just flung most of it right off. Yeah, that was great. Cool. All right, folks. Well, look at that stuff go. It might have been warmer in there, huh? Yeah. So we'll see. Well, it looks like maybe your line could have been right if you just poured it in the one bay. Possibly. Potentially. Yeah. Oh, That's always one cubic inch right there. Oh boy. Maybe I should have scooped it out, huh? Well, there we go. Oh, there you go. Where, where should I deposit it? Just dump it in there. Oh. No, I didn't. Oh, look at that. It's like peanut butter. I'd say just put it on top of a bit. Just scrape it there. Is that right? Oh, it's really sticky. Yeah. It's like uh, It's like some kind of weird glue. I was going to say, it's, it's like the uh, candy. Well, I suppose we should at least maybe scrape this out. So that's kind of what it does. Like maybe if we would have scraped it out of the right way. Yeah, right away would be good. We'll try that next time. Yep. Well, I'd say that was a success. This is like a major milestone. <laughs> sure is. So we can pretty much do the side here. We're still... Well, we still have to get back to working on this this pipe here. It's uh, We just kind of got focused on other elements. The big one was uh, the concrete back there and getting that back wall done. And so this kind of took uh, backstage to that. Um, so I have a little bit of work left to do on the fitting up there and then once it's done we can basically lock this pipe down and uh, get the fittings glued on there, get these uh, kind of like whatever you want to call them over the top. This is gonna, this is gonna prevent this from lifting up when we put foam in there because it, it just want to float that right off so we'll, we'll glass this in and it'll lock that pipe in place. And um, yeah, but it's nice to be able to get working on one side. Yeah. All right, we'll get another shot. So we're just gonna do about a half batch, so about eight. It's where my finger is, so can you see that okay? Good. Good. Yeah. Steaming up. <clears throat> Looks like the expansion has slowed. Yeah, right here is actually, that was still open when we went up, so it's still, it's still working. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit right here and in these two spots right here, and then the rest is gonna go over there. So that's why we just did a, a half shot here. 
Yep. So we're getting the, the space layer down against the hole, like Dad was saying earlier, get that thermal break going on there. And then, uh, yeah, Be happy times. Five, four, three, two, one, go for it. Good 30 right now. a better idea just to not try and do that. Maybe we should have just done a little cup or something. You can hear it start to pop. Oh yeah, I did hear that. Remember we said it's like Rice Krispies? Quite literally. All right, well, we'll just let this stuff do its magic here. Yeah. Alright, well, I think that's our first shot. I don't know, we'll probably do some more later. Um, let this set up a little bit, but I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. It's kind of like a Rice crispy at first, so I'll save this one for tomorrow. I'm going to set it right over here. Here, I'll put it over here in this corner so you remember it. And this is what the other one's like. It's pretty much just like, ah, uh, you know. So if, you ever, <laughs> yeah. so if you ever use this stuff and um, you go to compress it right away and it just flattens out to nothing, please don't be alarmed. As long as you're mixing it 50-50, you're fine. Um, check it the next day. We will with that piece over there or maybe one of these chunks stuck to the wall and uh, you'll see. You'll see, it'll be just fine. Yeah, so we'll just kind of let this do its thing for a little while and uh, and cure a bit, and then we'll revisit it maybe here in a, in a while, maybe this evening. All right, so we're getting ready to do another foam pour. We got our two parts up here. Dad's down the hold, seeing how much uh, fill we need to do. We're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday. Do a little bit there and a little bit in the middle, and uh, just see how far it goes. We don't want dump a whole bunch in otherwise it could run away on us and just puff up past where we want it to stop so that's not to go too crazy with it yeah the other thing it, it tends to not stick to the sides very well so it kind of acts like a cake it rises up where it's thicker and we want to kind of try and hopefully maintain a fairly flat surface it just makes it'll make things easier for us later so yeah it doesn't really make any difference yep go throw a whole bunch in there and just have a puff up like a I don't know, souffle like a souffle exactly <laughs> yeah yeah we figured we just 
put some down now and then put some down later and you should be good. Um, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think it needs to cure overnight or anything. Nah. So we're just keeping a tally in the wall over here to keep track of our pours. Get an idea of how much juice we've used. So you could just do the inside and then do the outside next time and alternate that way. Might kind of level it up a bit, huh? Yeah. Alright, I'll try that. Here's that piece from yesterday. Oh. So you saw the other one, how rice crispy it was and how it just crushed. Now it doesn't do that now. And this other stuff from yesterday is actually quite, it's quite rigid. Like, that's a lot of pressure right there. To even push it in. So, it's good stuff. Yeah. How do we do? Looks good. Very good. And got a little bit everywhere, huh? Yep. Yeah. Well, come along, guys. Uh, we just did one more little pour off camera, but getting closer back here. We're gonna mark a line pretty soon, and and. Uh, Probably do smaller batches, I suppose, okay? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want that getting away from us. Got this trimmed up and fit in here. Super happy with it. Uh, it looks good. Just trimmed it right to the center of these supports right here. And then um, we're just gonna lay up a corner, about like that, and such as this. And this is kind of what I was talking about. Take this tool and just put a little slit right underneath the foam or the uh, 
the laminate, the fiberglass laminate. Then we'll have a nice corner on here. Cut this to whatever length we need to. That'll just slip underneath there. We can uh, put some structural putty on there and glue it in. And then we can come back in here and we'll just trim this off and, and uh, putty it and fair it down. So what this is gonna do is, once this has a bevel on it, it just gives us a nice thick layer underneath where these two meet and kind of bridges that instead of just having a bevel and then coming across with your new laminate, this is gonna give it a lot of strength like that. And also just instantly create this corner, this radius, which is really nice. So that's kind of what we got going on there. Uh, the rest of it's trimmed up. This flange is gonna be really helpful down here. We'll do the same thing, we'll putty that in and uh, we'll just grab some stick of wood like this, piece of wood and then a long one and clamp it. That'll pull that in tight until it sets. Real simple, then we'll come back in here uh, just knock it down a little bit, put some putty in there. And then as we put on our shaft alley covers up here, they're gonna get wrapped down and we'll overlap that and tie it all in. We'll end up with a nice thick laminate right here where it can take some abuse. Um, and this will all be real solid mm -hmm. done. Yeah, should be nice. Really happy with it. it uh, it's amazing how quickly it dresses things up even though it's not done. I just got another chunk of sump laid up while Dad trimmed it and put it in place and kind of fit around the pipe. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and mix some foam up and pour it around that pipe. Get it permanently in place. Yeah. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. Exciting. Kind of started trimming up our, our sump form a little bit. It's a little bit weird where that pipe is because it... Uh, intrudes on the, the sump a bit, but we'll just have to put a little slanted piece in there to, to cover it up. It's no big deal. Feels like it thickened up fast. <laughs> Maybe it's a little hot. Yep. But good expansion. Guess it'll be the same thing. Maybe a thin spot or two, but yeah, it'll all okay. be good. Looking good so far, yeah? Yeah. Hope that hard enough and maybe just shoot the well, then we'll see. We'll see which way to shoot her on down. Maybe it's better just to come straight over the top again and let it run down. I don't know, we'll see. Yep, we'll see. You can see the foam, you can see the foam on the hull didn't expand immediately. That's the difference in temperature there. Over here you can see it, it does with time, but definitely not quite as fast as the stuff that's thick or already, already poured. That stuff should puff up pretty good down there, huh? Yeah. Hey there? Yep. Radio. <laughs> Let's 
Yeah, this is exciting, guys. Sure is. <laughs> Finally getting it ohmed into place. Our pipe is in place. Happy with that? Oh, yeah. Got our first chunk for the sump up there cut. This is what I was talking about. I had to do a little modifying on it. But it'll come in here like this and then we'll just put a, a slant on it right here and down. Yeah, give it plenty of insulation around that top part of the pipe there. I suppose in reality we could have just boxed it there. Maybe we will. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. 